On this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about the new Sony X80K. Now I will tell you this part of the 2022 lineup and if you was wondering, I haven't seen any huge differences between the J series from last year, except for remote control and some new features for the PS5. So in this video, we're gonna go over the design. We're gonna talk about the different inputs. I'm gonna show you guys some picture tests and do a little gaming. I'm Tech Steve, sit back and relax and let's get started. Instead of redesigning the X80K, they used the chassis from the X85J from last year. As you notice on the bottom where the Sony logo is, it does have the slot that wasn't available on the last year 80J models. The screen isn't housed in a black chassis that goes all the way around and it looks really premium from the front. To put it together is very easy. There's no tools needed for the snap-in feet. And taking a look at it from the side view, you're gonna notice that it is a lot thicker because it does have what they call direct backlights. Now I don't know the reasoning why, but when it comes to the display, this one is available from 43 inch all the way up to 75 inches. The 50 inch is a VA panel. However, the 43, 55, 65, and 75 are all IPS panels. And just in case you don't know the differences is that the IPS is generally gonna give you better colors as well as better viewing angles where the VA is gonna give you better dark levels, what they call contrast. And this is a 60 Hertz panel. So it will play PlayStation, Xbox, no problem. It's gonna run very smooth. In fact, there's not many games that can actually play at 120 Hertz. However, if you really wanna press this TV, you can get 120 Hertz out of it, but you're gonna drop the resolution down to 1080p. When it comes to the motion rate to smooth out movies or anything that's filmed in 24 frames per second, it doesn't really do that great a job and mainly because they call it motion 240, but in actuality, it's only running at 60 Hertz. So it's not gonna be as clean as you can see on other televisions. Just like the X80J from last year, the X80K still has the same type of setup. When it comes to dimming, it does not support local dimming. They use a technology called frame dimming Addition to that, when it comes to backlight, it uses direct backlights, and that causes the TV to be a lot thicker because all the backlights go all the way across the panel. Now, it doesn't look like they updated the processor in it, so this TV uses the X1 processor along with Trilumius Pro technology to give you better enhanced colors. Another thing I want to add is that the picture profiles in this TV includes HDR10, HLG, Dolby Vision, and it also has object-based HDR that tracks images on the screen. And some people call this Sony Picture Science. This TV, just like the previous models, has 4K Reality Pro, which up converts HD or 2K content to look more like 4K. And I will tell you, in my experience, if the content looks really good in a 1080p or 2K, it's gonna look great on this television. However, if you have old choppy footage, it's gonna look bad on this television because most of the newer television that supports 4K has more lines of resolution, so they do like better signals to get the best performance out of them. Now keep this in mind, this is a recording, so these tests could vary according to what you see in real time, but I will let you guys know that this VA panel performs pretty good considering that it is one of the entry-level Sony TVs. I also took a look at the uniformity and I didn't see too much vignetting in the corner, in addition to that, you can see this contrast test really shows the levels from the black levels to the white and everything seems to be pretty good, again, considering the price point. Another thing I took a look at was blooming in the television and you can see that it did a really good job. If you notice that there's not much halo come around the images and ghosting seems to be clean as well. Being that it's a VA panel, I didn't really know what to expect until I did some tests here and I noticed that when I started getting a little bit to the side that everything started to fade just a little bit. So if you get a VA panel like this Sony X80K, sitting in front of it's gonna be the sweet spot. But if you have a chair on either side, I think you'll be fine because it's not that bad. What happens is you lose a lot of the details in the colors is basically how the viewing angles work on most VA panels. Now what I'm gonna do is show you guys a quick demo of some footage that I took just so you guys can see the picture quality and then we have some more things to go over. So as you can see, this Sony really performs, but I will tell you, if you get the IPS panel, the colors are gonna be more richer than this particular TV. It's a little bit flat in compared to the IPS even though I know a lot of people don't prefer the IPS. 
On the rear panel, you're gonna find this checkerboard design that has vents on the top as well as the center. On the side, you're gonna find your power supply and you're gonna find four screw holes that you can use to mount it on the wall. And here's the screw hole patterns for all the different sizes that are available for this model. And when it comes to the Sony TV, it does require these little screws like this that you have to put in there before you can put the mounting bracket on the television. As far as connectivity, it has two USBs and one of them is a USB 3.0. It has a fiber optic output. It also has a composite video input that requires a $10 adapter and you'll find four HDMI inputs. Now all these inputs are 60 Hertz and input three is for eARC so you can hook up a soundbar and control it. Addition to that, you have a LAN connection for connecting direct to your router. It has an RS-232C port for service guys and it has an IR input so you can control the television with other devices. And you'll find an ATSC 3.0 tuner that's gonna allow you to get over the air 4K content when it's available in your area through next gen technology. It also has Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and a feature called Wi-Fi Direct. So if you wanna connect your phone directly to the television without the need for Wi-Fi, it only supports 2.4 gigahertz. Now when it comes to Bluetooth, this model will let you add your own headphones. Also, you can hook up GamePad so you can use some of the application to play Game Zone, and you can also use that for keyboards, mouse, as well as anything that works off of Bluetooth. Now let's talk about gaming modes. First of all, if you're going to use 1080p, you can go all the way up to 120 hertz, but keep in mind this is a 60 hertz panel, and that's going to smooth out your games. It also supports 440p and 4K at 60 hertz. After doing my input lag testing, I was able to get 11.1 .1 milliseconds, and it does have auto low latency, but it does not support VRR. And if you own a PS5, it's gonna give you auto HDR tone mapping and auto genre picture mode. And this tone mapping feature is great to give you the best picture quality, but is it really new because of this? I was looking at the X80J, which is last year's model, on the website, and they don't mention tone mapping. But when I was filming some B-roll for an upcoming video, I did notice this. If you look at the X80K, the software was developed in October of 2021, and the X80J software was developed in November 2021, a month later. So does that mean that the X80J has these features, but they never told us about it? If you own a Sony television, you might be used to this. This is the huge remote control that came out years ago, but on this new X80K, they changed the remote control to this. It's a much smaller, slimmer design, and I really like it a lot because a lot of people really didn't use those numbers because most people use apps or a top set box from your cable or direct TV provider. And I will tell you this remote control has all the essentials that you need. On top, you have a microphone, you have your navigation pad as well as a built-in Google Assistance button. You have your volume up and down, your channel rocker, as well as some hotkeys at the bottom. There's YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime to go directly to those applications. So now I just want to show you guys the operating system real quick. Over here, you can do search as well as press this button and do voice commands, just like any type of Google Assistance device. Down here, you're gonna see all the applications that you have installed. And at the top here, you have live, movie, shows, application, as well as a library. So you can see there's plenty of applications that you can get on the Google TV. Now, if you go over here to the top, you go into your settings. And under there, you have your channel, your display, and all type of different settings. Another feature I wanna show you guys is called the Calman Bravio, and you need an adapter like this to calibrate the television. So what you would do is, if you had a professional come out, they would basically pull up the TV and then use software like this. And the great thing is that this allows the TV to talk to your computer so it can set up everything pretty much automatically through the software. 
And that Calman software is gonna run you about $145 and around $250 for the tester. If you really wanna calibrate your television by yourself, that's what it's gonna cost you. Now we'll tell you for 2022, Sony is promoting this new camera for your television. It's called the CMU BC1 and it is a great add-on. It does features like automatic sound, picture adjustments, as well as tracking people in the room. Now we'll tell you that Sony camera has a lot of features like automatic tracking. It really works with the television because it's designed with it software wise, but let's just see if we can get another camera to work. So on top of the TV here, I have this one by a company called Nexico. It's a 4K camera. I did a video on it a few uh, episodes ago, so you can go check it out. It's about 200 bucks. Uh, and then down here, I have the Google Duo software. So let's go ahead and install it and see what happens. So first thing is asking for access to my contacts. This is a demo account. I don't really use it. Next thing is that uh, it can take pictures and record video. I'm okay with that. And that it will record audio. So now we got that all set up. There you have it. So granted the lighting, you have to adjust it with your particular TV, but you can see with this bright lights and adjust my Sony, now I could call someone using this camera right on the television. Pretty cool stuff. For the people who are using antenna, all you would do is just go to your channels and inputs, go to channels, go to cable antenna, and then down here you can scan for local channels. And here's a look at the built-in TV guide for over-the-air scanning. So you can see it found a ton of channels. It shows a thumbnail preview. And at the top, you can choose from movies, news, sports, and comedy. I will tell you that this particular model doesn't do a DVR with the thumb drive, but I have heard in some areas you will get that option. So last thing I wanna show you guys is the sound setting. So this remote control with the microphone can calibrate the audio towards your room. What you would do is go down here to where it says audio uh, calibration, press on it, and then we're gonna go ahead and set it up, hit next, and then hit start. And then after that, your room and your TV is gonna get the best sound. Now I will tell you that the Sony has a really good audio quality and I decided not to demo it just because this is a recording, but I will tell you if you're the type of person who are not into sound bars, then this TV is gonna sound really good compared to most TVs on the set. And that's thanks to that backlit panel that makes this TV so thick. The speaker's on the bottom and that's gonna allow you to get more bass and more clarity. So I hope this video gives you a better understanding of the new Sony X80K. And I will tell you for me, from last year model, there's not many upgrades, but they're subtle enough that if you're looking for the newest model television, then it's worth going for. Now I will tell you guys that I have a lot of other videos coming up in the near future. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that now. Also give me a thumbs up on this video if you wanna use it as a reference. And just in case I miss something that you want to see, Leave a comment below and hopefully in the future I can get back to these comments and then make an updated video answering your questions. I'm Tech Steve. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace! Tech Steve.